Hi, this is Mrs. Alexander, and this is your 2.24 front load for your energy and food colorometry lab. In this lab, we're going to be burning food in order to see how much heat is released, and we're going to directly relate that to calories in the food. First, you need to know what is a calorie and how is it related to food. Heat equals energy. So as we burn the food, it's going to release the energy. There is the first law of thermodynamics, which states that energy cannot be changed from, can be changed from one form to another, but it cannot be created or destroyed. So when you burn the food, that energy has to go somewhere. It's going to go into our water, which is going to be contained in our Coke can. And therefore, our water temperature is going to rise, and we're going to be able to measure that heat transfer. This also relates to essential question number two, which asks you how the amount of energy in food is determined. So how do those companies know how many grams and carbs and lipids and all those things are in food when it comes to the calories. You're going to get to do the science behind food labels in this lab. Every day you have actions and chemical reactions occurring in your body and they power you, they give you the energy and you get that from the food that you eat. Your body's job is to disassemble what you eat bit by bit and capture it and store it like we talked about in our last activity. We talked about dehydration which is removing H2O in order to build polymers. We talked about hydrolysis, which is adding water in order to break apart those molecules so that we can use them for energy. This requires a lot of our different body systems, such as our digestion system and our endocrine system working together, mechanically chewing that food, chemically digesting it with enzymes in our stomach. Um, our food is absorbed through our small intestines and it travels all through our body. It uses the circulatory system, our blood, in order to reach all of the regions of our body that need to be supplied with energy and food. These cells in our tissues to capture that energy from food and it is broken down even smaller with the help of water and it's also obtained this oxygen that's in the water, H2O, from our respiratory systems. You will need to know some background information. We already talked about the food labels and how those numbers are listed on the back. It talks about calories in a serving of food. Usually a, a serving is like half a package or one cup. Well, we're going to break it all the way down to the individual bite or piece of food. So you might test something like a Cheeto or a Cheez-It or one individual mini marshmallow, and you're going to figure out how many calories are in that one individual bite, let alone not just the serving size, but that one individual piece. So as you observed earlier in the unit, they, and you analyze the food labels, you found that different foods contain different calories. The average person consumes about 2,000 calories a day. However, the number of calories in a piece of food is different than the total in each day. We will actually ignite and light the food on fire, figure out the amount of energy determined by the increase of the temperature of water given off by that burning food. The process is performed in an apparatus called a calometer. That's why we call it calometry. The number of calories on a serving of food is indicated by the amount of energy that that serving of food provides to the body. When, when referring to a food, a food calorie is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. So we need to know the water temperature before and the water temperature after. We need to know how the gram of the amount of food you're using before and then after we burn it. There's a lot of math in this lab. The number of calories in a piece of food is determined by measuring the increase of the temperature of a known volume of water when the portion of food is burned. Now, when you see the word calorie with a capital C and a calorie with a lowercase c, it's very confusing because there are two definitions and a capital C is not the same as a lowercase c. So in order to help us not be confused, we're going to eventually convert our measurements our math into joules. Joules is how we measure energy. In chemistry, a calorie is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water to one Celsius. Notice this is gram, not kilogram. The calories listed on a food label are actually in kilocalories, not in grams or not in just a regular calorie because the amount of water being heated is a kilogram instead of a gram. Remember, a kilogram is a thousand times more than a gram. It was really confusing, and so they stopped using the prefix kilocalorie, and instead 
we use a capital C to talk about a food calorie or a kilocalorie. So a capital C means kilocalorie. Even though we still did that, it still gets overwhelming, and so a lot of times scientists will just write both types with lowercase. But because of the confusion, we now use the measure of energy called a joule. One calorie, chemi chemistry calorie, is equal to 4.18 joules. You'll need to know that number at the end, so you want to use that conversion. And one calorie in food, capital C, is equivalent to 4,186 joules. Notice that those are different between 1,000. Because a chemistry calorie is 1,000 less than a food calorie. So in this activity, we're going to burn different types of food, foods that are mostly fat, foods that are mostly carbs, and foods that are mostly proteins. And you're going to be able to see that there's a correlation to how many kilocalories are found. This little um, image right here shows you that one gram of fat has more kilocalories than carbs and proteins. That's why our body would burn our fat before anything else, and that's the best way to store energy is as fat. In order to have a better clarification, I want you to stop right now and pause, and I want you to watch this 13 minutes of video clips. The first one is a Cheeto experiment, which is going to be very similar to what we're going to do in class. It's three minutes long. And then the next one is 10 minutes. And this math whiz is amazingly patient when he describes how to do the math for this lab. And you want to bookmark that link, and you want to watch it again when you go to do your math in a couple days after we're done doing the experiment. You're going to collect your math in class with a data table that looks similar like this. And we're going to take a day or so um, to write out these measurements, uh, write out the data table, and then you'll get a day to go ahead and fill them in and do the math involved. So I want you to stop right now and go ahead and watch those 13 minutes of videos. That should bring you to about 20 minutes of notes, this 7 minutes, and another 13.